Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another video review. But before I get started, I need you guys to do me a favor. If you're watching this video right here and have not subscribed to Patriot Prime Reviews, please hit that subscribe button right now. It won't cost you a thing, but will help me and my channel out tremendously. Also, I am proud to announce that ToyHacks.com is sponsoring this review. You know me, I absolutely love Toy Hacks decals. About 75% of my collection has benefited from their products, all the way from Generation 1 to the new modern figures. Toy Hacks provides label sets, upgrade kits, and display backdrops for Transformers toys of all types and generations. New for 2020, Toy Hacks is introducing the Toy Hacks Armory, where they'll be offering a variety of weapons for your favorite bots in multiple colors. Also this year, Toy Hacks is introducing Robo Points. For every purchase you make, you'll earn Robo Points that you can redeem towards a voucher for future purchases. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors, so check out toyhacks.com and make your collection stand out from the rest. And tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bots for this video is 1986's Generation 1 Stunicons and their awesome combined form of Menasaur. Now, the Stunicons made their first appearance in the animated television series during the two-parter Key to Vector Sigma. Megatron created the Stunicons to combat the Autobots on the ground. For some reason, they just couldn't handle the Autobots who were ground-based vehicles, so Megatron decided to have Rumble steal some various automobiles, which in turn he created robots out of. Now, the Stunicons being created on Earth did not have any personality, so Megatron used the Space Bridge to go to Cybertron so he could use Vector Sigma, the Cybertronian supercomputer, to infuse the Stunicons with life. Now, the Autobots followed Megatron to Cybertron and ended up creating the Aerial Bots during the same couple of episodes. The Aerial Bots were also a combiner team, and they in turn combined to form Superion to take on the Stunicons combined form of Menasaur. Now, Menasaur and the Stunicons actually appeared a lot throughout Season 2 and Season 3 of the Transformers in various different episodes where they usually always ended up taking on their arch-rival, Superion. Now, Menasaur made his first appearance in Marvel Comics in issue number 22, where his face graced the cover of one of Marvel's 25th anniversary issues, where he had all the different Marvel heroes all the way around him. So it was a pretty cool comic book cover. Now, the Stunicons, it was almost the same storyline. Megatron created the Stunicons on Earth in order to combat the Autobots, but instead of using the supercomputer Vector Sigma, Megatron had tapped into Optimus Prime via one of Bombshell's Cerebro shells, and when Optimus Prime was creating the Aerial Bots using his creation matrix, Megatron, using some sort of helmet, was able to infuse his Stunicons with life at the same time. And as usual, it was the Stunicons versus the Aerial Bots in that issue. Now, unfortunately, the Stunicons were only really used in that issue. Throughout the entire series, they were mainly just background characters. So enough of me talking about the group. Let's go ahead and take a look at my absolute favorite Generation 1 combiner team. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> We'll start things off by taking a look at the Stunicons in their vehicle modes. We have Drag Strip, the Formula One racer, Breakdown, the Lamborghini, the leader Motormaster, the Semi, Dead End, the Porsche, and Wild Rider, the Ferrari. Now I gotta give a big shout out to ToyHacks.com. I completely restored this Generation 1 Stunicon set, and without their Generation 1 repro labels, it wouldn't have been possible. So ToyHacks, thank you so much. 
Now the first figure we're going to go over is Drag Strip, the Formula One racer. And I loved this figure as a kid. Something about the six-wheeled race car really appealed to me. Now, as you can see, he does have this double-barrel cannon on top that can be removed. It just plugs into the back. It's got this L shape, plugs right in there. Put that to the side so we can get a better look at drag strip in vehicle mode. And this thing looks great. I love the wheels. I love the chrome engine on the back, the spoiler. I mean, this vehicle mode, it rolls really, really good. Knock the Wild Rider out of the way. So yeah, not much to car mode. Nice yellow collar, great decals, thanks to Toy Hacks. Now let's go ahead and get him transformed. Super simple transformation. You're gonna take the engine and flip it over so it fits into the cockpit. Then take the bottom section, pull down, flip the spoiler up, forming the feet, and then take the front, fold back, revealing the head and his arms. And there you have drag strip in robot mode. Decent enough robot mode. You can make out his face sculpt there. He's got a square head. All of these combiners do have square heads to implement the combiner gimmick. The chrome looks really good on the chest. I mean, he's all one lower leg, one of the downfalls of Generation 1. Only articulation he has is the arms can go up and down. He does come with a blaster. He's got this little purple gun right here that unfortunately pegs in above the fist instead of in his fist. I mean, I wish they could have put a hole in his fist. One of my biggest complaints of the figure. So you're going to peg it in right there above the fist. And now you have drag strip in robot mode, all armed and ready for battle. Now let's take a look at Breakdown. Breakdown is the Lamborghini. Really nice looking Lamborghini. He's got the blue dual barrel, dual barrel cannon there on top. We'll go ahead and take that off so we can get a better look at vehicle mode. Lots of great molded detail. The paint applications are really good on this guy. Nice decal thanks to Toy Hacks. Really nice looking vehicle. And just like the others, he rolls really, really good. Now his transformation is simple, but it's got a couple extra steps. What you're gonna do is separate the rear of the vehicle like before, swing around these sections, and then push forward, forming the legs. Go ahead and turn the vehicle over, take the whole front part of the car and flip back, move the sides forward, and there you have breakdown in robot mode. Nice die cast metal chest, Fairly decent face sculpt. You can see the mouth. You can see the visor. Great decals once again, thanks to Toy Hacks. Only articulation, just like the others, the arms can move up and down. Breakdown also comes with a little blue pistol. Pop that in his hand. And there you have Breakdown, all armed and ready for battle in robot mode. Next up, we'll take a look at Dead End. Dead End has the big black dual barrel cannon on the rear of the vehicle attached. Go ahead and remove that. Nice looking Porsche, great molded details. I like the lights right there. The paint stripe or the pin stripe down here on the right side looks really, really good. That sticker was a pain to apply. I can let you know that right now. Great paint applications once again for the windows. He has the exact same transformation as Breakdown. You're going to separate the rear of the vehicle, flip these sections around, push in, turn the figure over, flip the front of the vehicle back, sides forward, and there you have Breakdown in robot mode. Another die cast metal chest, great sticker decals. He's got a gold face, kind of make out the details there. And breakdown, excuse me, dead end, comes with a black pistol. Put that in his hand. And there you have dead end in robot mode, all armed and ready for battle. That leg is a little loose. And well, also articulation, arms can go up and down. That's it. They could do a complete 360, but they will catch on the front of the car that's hanging off the figure's back. 
Next up is Wild Rider. Wild Rider is a Ferrari, and this vehicle looks awesome. Double barrel cannon on the back. My biggest complaint with Wild Rider, he could have used some paint applications to break up the windows. See how the, the whole side's red, whole front's red. Some black paint or gray paint highlighting those lines would have really helped. But other than that, a really sharp looking vehicle. This one has the simplest transformation of them all. Simply pull the rear of the vehicle back, flip the front up and back, and there you have Wild Rider in robot mode. Another die cast metal chest, fairly decent face sculpt. This one I always thought had the worst face sculpt of the bunch. And the decals, very ball pitish, very colorful. Wild Rider came with a pistol with a scope, so I thought that was pretty neat. We'll peg right in there to his hand. And there you have Wild Rider in robot mode, all armed and ready for battle. And now we're moving on to the leader, Motormaster. Motormaster is a black and gray semi, and I love the looks of this rig. Now, when I first got Motormaster back in the day, I was so disappointed when I found out how small he was. In the cartoon, you know, he's always taking on Optimus Prime to prove who's king of the road. This little guy is practically the length of Optimus Prime's cab all by himself. So that, that was a little bit of a disappointing realization for me as a kid. But other than that, I mean, he's a great looking truck. Now, there's no rotation. The cab cannot rotate separate from the trailer. It's all hooked together. Beautiful painted details, great chrome work. I love this truck. And a little another shout out to Toy Hacks. I love the Menasaur license plate that they added. Really, really cool. Now let me get these other guys out of the way because Motormaster has, aside from his robot mode, another transformation where he can turn into a base. And how you do that is you split open the top of the trailer, the back section and fold the side flaps all the way down, flip this section out, and that forms a ramp. Let's see if I can get that all the way around. This figure's a little tight in transforming to the base mode. So there you have that. Now, what I like to do, flip this section over, pull the front section out, and then separate the whole front section of the vehicle, bringing these parts out. And then I angle the truck sections up to make it look like he has towers. And there is Motormaster's base mode. Motormaster comes with a little roller type vehicle. It doesn't really have a front or a back. It does have wheels so it can roll around and can actually drive up into Motormaster's base mode. This base mode also can fit the Stun and Kong cars as well. So we can have Wild Rider pulling up into the base for repairs. Now let's go ahead and get Motormaster transformed into robot mode. We're gonna take these sections here, go ahead and bring those down. Those will form the robot legs, take the top, fold over, fold the ramp back up in place and click the sides together. Now you're gonna take the arms and spread out just slightly, they should click in place, leaving a little gap right here where those tabs can fit into place, forming Motormaster's chest, and there you have Motormaster in robot mode. Now he is quite blocky. I always liked how the truck cab formed the feet. He's got a great face sculpt. I wish he had more paint applications though, because the purple, it just takes over the whole face and his eyes are the same color. He needed eye decals or paint on the eyes to really make those pop. But other than that, I love the sculpted detail on his face. Limited mobility, just like the other Stunicons, his arms can do a complete 360, and I guess his legs can go in and out. That's mainly due to transformation. Now on Motormaster's box art, he's shown transformed like this. And I think that looks stupid. So I always transform my Motormaster with the legs 
straight down, which gives him a little bit more height. Now, Motormaster came with a couple weapons. He has this chrome sword and large purple gun. And there we have Motormaster all armed and ready for battle. I love the looks of that chrome sword. The Stunicons in robot mode look great together. I love how the cars are all the same size. Motormaster is a lot taller. Granted, he'd be smaller if I did the box art style transformation, but it works really good because he's the leader. Now, the Stunicons have another awesome ability where they can all combine together to form the larger Super Decepticon warrior, Menasaur. So what we're going to do, we're going to start with Motormaster first. Go ahead and remove his weapons. Take this section here down and then push the arms in tight. Then flip the front section back. So the arms are now flush against the side of the vehicle. Now you're going to take Motormaster and transform him into box art mode. And now take the cab section, the feet, and you're going to unpeg those and flip them all the way around against the back of the figure. So he looks like this. Now you're going to take the roller vehicle. There is two holes on one side that correspond with the pegs on Motormaster's chest. You're going to attach those. You're going to take this waist piece, and that's going to go right there between the fists and the legs. Motormaster has a mask opposed to a head. It's just a mask. You're going to attach that over Motormaster's face. So Menasaur is coming along. That's pretty much all there is for Menasaur's torso. Now you're going to take Drag Strip, remove the gun. You're going to transform him back into vehicle mode, except you're not going to push this section together. I always use Drag Strip as the right arm. Go behind the figure and flip the head down, which is also the combiner peg. Then you're going to take a right fist, put that in the peg hole on the bottom, and then you're going to attach drag strip to Motormaster via the combiner port. That slots right into place. Next up is dead end. I like to use dead end for the other arm. Remove his weapon. Same thing. You're going to go ahead and slide the combiner port down. Bring the hood of the car up extend the legs and fold them back like you're going to transform him back into vehicle mode but i extend those out it gives the arms a little bit more length we're going to get the left fist this time attach that on the back and the combiner port will fit here on the other side so menasaur is halfway there next up is breakdown remove breakdown's weapon straighten out the arms Extend the legs, flip those around, and for the legs, you're going to bring the vehicle all the way together. So hook it like so, leave the top down or the front of the vehicle folded over. We're going to take the right foot plate. There is a R, you see right there, so you know which one's right, which one's left. We're going to attach the right foot plate underneath breakdown, so the right leg is ready. Lastly, we've got Wild Rider, remove his weapon, arms down, push the back together. Got to make sure and line it up. See these little slots right there? He's the only one that has these slots. You got to make sure that's lined up just right. So we'll go together, leave the hood down, take the left foot plate, connect that. And now you're going to take Minosaur underneath. You've got these square holes. That'll go match up with those square pegs. So we'll lock in Breakdown, then Wild Rider. Now we're going to take Motormaster's giant rifle. We'll give that to Minosaur, put that in his right hand. And normally what you're supposed to do is you take Motormaster's sword and give to Minosaur to hold in his left hand. A few years ago, I discovered a replacement sword much bigger from, I believe it was a company called Crazy Devi. 
It looks exactly like the Generation 1 sword, but much bigger. And this thing looks great, wielded by Motormaster, and it fits perfectly. So now you have the combined form of the Stunicons, the Mighty Menasaur. And I love this combiner. He is one of the more solid combiners. He doesn't really fall apart when you shake him like some of the others do. Very limited mobility. The arms can go up and down. And that is it. The giant Crazy Devi sword looks great with him. Great looking chrome on it. We'll go ahead and take a close look at his face sculpt. The face sculpt, I always thought, looked like Sylvester Stallone. I mean, that may be just me, but maybe now you'll see it too, and you'll never unsee it. Great sticker decals, thanks to the other accessories, and that carry over very well thanks to the other Stunicons. But yeah, I love this figure. This was the only Decepticon combiner I owned as a kid, and he's one of my all-time favorites. So there is one final look at the Stunicons and their combined form of Menasaur. Now for some quick size comparisons, here is 1986's Menasaur with Generation 1 Megatron, his nemesis, Generation 1 Superion, and the very disappointing Combiner Wars Menasaur. 1986's Generation 1 Stunicons is a fantastic set of figures. The vehicle modes are great, the robot modes are great, and the combined form of Menasaur, though a little short, is great. These guys are solid figures, they're not prone to breakage, and I couldn't be happier with them. As I've said before, these are my favorite Generation 1 combiner team. So there you go, guys, 1986's Generation 1 Stunicons, Drag Strip, Breakdown, Motormaster, Dead End, and Wild Rider. So, does the Generation 1 Stunicons belong in your collection? Absolutely. This is a fantastic set. I've said it before. I'll say it again. This is my favorite combiner team out of Generation 1. They just look so good together. They are a great unified team, a very solid combiner. You can't go wrong with this guy. Now, be advised, there is some high quality knockoffs of this figure. So make sure you know what you're getting and make sure you're getting all those pieces and parts. You've got the double barrel cannons and little pistols for the smaller robots. And then Motormaster has the sword, the gun, the mask, the chest piece, the torso, the feet, the fists. There are a lot of pieces and parts to this figure. Now, guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Guys, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hoo-ah!